hi welcome to a new video once more and in this video i want us to discuss another application of partial differentiation which is the minimum at maximum point or in general uh, the critical points we can call them the critical points or we can call them the stationary points or we can call them the turning point we can use those three terms refer to the minimum, maximum, and center points. You can see these, these are the minimum, maximum, or the center point. of a function of more than one dependent not dependent but more than one dependent variable If um, function z, z is a function of x and y, that, that's kind of a function we are considering, then uh, then turning point or stationary point exists at points where at points where both partial derivatives both partial derivatives are zero that is at points where you have minimum and maximum points both partial derivative of the function z are equal to zero so for us to get the maximum and the minimum points or the saddle points we need first of all to get the first order partial derivatives and then equate them to zero but how do we, do we determine the nature of the critical point or of the turning point is it a minimum maximum or the center point uh, to determine the nature of a center point let uh, a the partial derivative of z second order with respect to y and then with respect to x b be the second order derivative of z with respect to x c to be the second order derivative of z with respect to y and delta to be equal to a squared minus bc if delta is greater than zero that is a saddle point the, the, the stationary point or the turning point is a saddle point if delta is less than zero uh, at b also less than zero then the particular a stationary point is a maximum point. If delta less than zero but b greater than zero, then that particular stationary point is a minimum point. Minimum point. So we need to do those two things 
in order to get the partial the critical points for a function of more than one dependent variable. You need to get the partial derivatives uh, in both directions, in direction x and direction y. Then we get the th these three uh, second order derivative and then we put them in this formula. Then we check what is happening and then we state the type of stationary point. So let us go ahead and do that and find the critical point of one or two examples from our past papers. Now, we'll be taught, we have been taught this question 6c. Okay, the stationary point of the function locate the stationary point point of the function z is equal to x squared minus 2y squared plus 4xy minus 8x plus 2y and determine their nature and determine their nature and then that question is 11 marks quite a good amount of marks z is equal to x squared minus 2y squared plus 4xy minus 8x plus 2y so solution we need to get the second order partial derivative of z with respect to x which will be 2x this is a constant it will disappear here it will differentiate with respect to x x will disappear it will get 4y here 8 x will disappear it will get negative 8 that will be a constant it will be 0 we differentiate with respect partial derivative of z with respect to y this one will be we are differentiated with respect to y, 0 is a constant, this is negative 4, y plus 4x, because y will disappear here, x, negative 8x is a constant, it will disappear, plus, plus 8. Now, equating the two partial derivative. Uh, to zero. Getting the two partial derivatives to zero, because you know where a critical point exists, then the value of the partial derivatives is equal to zero. And as eight is equal to zero, we have also four x here minus four y, four x minus four y plus two is equal to zero. Or we can say 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. We take that away to the other side of the equation. 4x minus 4y is equal to, take 2 to the other side is negative 2. We now eliminate using elimination method. Add 6x, 6x, add again. 0 is equal to 6. 6x is equal to 6. So we have x is equal to 1. If we have x is equal to 1, then we can find the value of y. We also have 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. Or 2 plus 4y is equal to 8. 4y. Take to the other side of the equation is equal to 6 y is equal to 6 over 4 y is equal to 2 3 over 2 uh, to determine the nature of the critical point we find the second order derivatives you differentiate well with we had differentiated with respect to y 
Now we differentiate it with respect to x so that we can get the second order derivative of y. So that we can get the second order derivative of z first with respect to y and then with respect to x, which will give us um, we are differentiating with respect to x. What are you differentiating with respect to x? Whatever you differentiated with respect to y. There are before y plus 4x plus 2. We differentiate this with respect to x. This is a constant, it will disappear, this is a constant, it will disappear. So that we have that second order derivative is 4. The second order derivative of z as with respect to y and then with respect to x is 4. Second order derivative of z with respect to x. Whatever I differentiated with respect to x, now we are differentiated with respect to x again. This and this is a constant, so we'll have to. Now second order derivative of z with respect to y. Here we differentiated with respect to y, differentiate again with respect to y. These two are constants, they will disappear, so you have negative 4y. Negative, not negative 4y, but negative 4. So that now we substitute in the equation. Delta is a squared minus bc, 4 point. 4 point. So what is the value there? Our, our critical point. Our critical point is the value of x is 1, the value of y is 3 over 2. The value of y is 3 over 2. For point that, a is equal to, here substitute y is 3 over 2x is 1. There is nothing to substitute. Because it's just 4, so we just say it's 4. B is equal to, here substitute x is 1, y is 3. There is nothing to substitute, no x, no y, so just say it is 2. C is, substitute x is 1, y is 3 over 2. There is no x, there is no y, just say it is, right, it is 4, negative 4. So that now, our delta is a squared, which is minus 2 times negative 4. This is 16 plus 8 is 24. Delta is greater than 0. This is a saddle point. Our stationary point or our critical point or our turning point is a saddle point. I think this was not 11 marks, it was 7 marks. Uh, it was 7, it's 7 marks, not 11 marks. I think that's the far we'll go as the uh, differentiation is concerned. But remember, as we said earlier, uh, the government is in the process of facing out neck exams, so I'll not be investing more times in the uh, solving problem in neck exams but rather i'll try to shift to a different niche but i want before that all those people will be first take advantage of my video so that they can clear their refers with neck and even those who have not done their neck examination because for the next three years or so you will be in the process of facing out neck examination from the technical institute as we they go the cbet way so that is it uh, remember to support the channel by liking the video sharing the video, uh, watching the videos online, or even uh, commenting on the video. We say that helps to improve what you call search engine optimization or SOE so that when the YouTube algorithm see that there is a lot of engagement in the videos, my videos can be proposed to even more people so that we can help even greater number of students pass their mathematics exam. So that is it. I believe I'm not wasted. Your time in this video, certainly not in the next video.